welcome into the podcast, the show, <laughs> the show of shows, the podcast of podcasts. Yeah, that's Keith. So, See Keith hey. over there? Sorry, man. I threw everybody. I threw Jay off right at the beginning where I, I gave him a, bu- a really bad countdown and he did a no, whole, you, <gasps> you which did okay. was funny, which was funny. It's all right. It's, all right. <laughs> it's been a while, buddy. Been a while since we've. Uh, yeah. Well, we've been got, busy. We've been, uh, you know, doing other stuff related to the, the program. Right. Yeah, pre- preparing and getting ready for some some upcoming uh, activities. Do we want to save that? No, nah, you can mention it. Uh, I, I don't see do that? why not. Yeah. Well, I, you know, it's it's time for us to kind of you know make mention that we're really um, you know working towards some some higher goals and and uh, we are we're going to be at a great show come up next uh, in November. It'll be uh, November. What is it? Fourth uh, through the eighth or something. Yeah, like that. it's like the first week of November. Right. Yeah. So we're going to be at. Uh, the SEMA show, as well as Apex, uh, will be roaming the uh, the halls. And uh, if you're there, come try to come try to find us. Um, uh, we're going to be walking around and uh, hopefully uh, getting some some good footage and and some interviews and talking to some people. And hopefully, we'll get us a live podcast from there. So get ready for that, man. Yep, I'm exci- I'm excited. How about you? I'm very excited. Yeah, I I, uh, I expect we'll be doing quite a bit of live streaming. Yeah. Um, so just, uh, keep an eye on the website, uh, at partscounterguru.com and we will post, um, updates there. Yeah. It's probably the easiest way, but certainly, you know, social media, Facebook and Instagram will, will, will give you a heads up on there as well. Yeah. Yeah. We'll probably do a little Facebook live. That'd be great. Um, I think that, uh, that's a nice little quick way to, uh, let people know where we're at and what we're doing. Yeah. And uh, we can send them on over to our website and send them on over to our YouTube channel, too, to check out some of that feed as well. Yeah, so. so that's actually a good point. When we do live stream, the two places that we typically live stream are, are YouTube and Facebook Live. That's right. That's right. So either one so. of those will will we'll, we'll probably show up on. Yeah, so get ready, people. We're, uh, we're excited, man. So anyway... Sin City, man, here we come. Oh, and um, by, by the yeah, way, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I mentioned yeah, this yeah, to you. Yeah, since, yeah. since you all know that we love rock and roll, you know who's going to be in Vegas while we're there? They extended um, their residency, man. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Billy Vera and the Beaters. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, no, 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 no. We talked about Steven Tyler, man. Yeah, Aerosmith. Aerosmith's gonna be. Uh, they're gonna be on uh, on duty. Do you so. think? Uh, do you think there will ever come a, a point in Aerosmith's future if anything happens to Steven Tyler? Where, well, I've joked before that maybe Liv is gonna take his place, but they could just <laughs> put that mic stand with all the tassels on it up there, and like in the right light with shadows, you wouldn't even know he's not there, right? Um, probably. <laughs> you know they're doing it with J- uh, Ronnie James Dio with the uh, hologram stuff, man. Yeah. You know, if he yeah. ever goes, I mean, at least we have that, right? I, I think I think we it's it, we're almost there. It's almost come to that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, for all of the people who never got to see the Doors, I mean, that might be the only way you can. Yeah. You know, so old Jim, hologram Jim, that'd be yeah. great. So, so what I mean, else is cooking? Uh. I don't know, man. I mean, uh, there's so, there's a lot to talk about, but I think we're saving some of this for some upcoming podcasts. Uh, yeah, yeah, there maybe, is. Uh, maybe we just get into a little bit. Well, so what are we? We're, we're talking today about uh, the Ford Bronco, right? The, the yeah. upcoming one, not the not the OJ one, like the one that's about to be released. That's right. We are, and um, that's going to be a fun topic. Uh, it, it's it's interesting all the speculation that's surrounding this thing. Um, I have my own opinion on that, and that's why we're doing this. Yeah. Uh, I think your your goal is to establish uh, some of the things that they should be concentrating on um, in the world of competition. Yeah. So uh, I, I keep watching or listening if you're listening to this podcast, and we're going to get to all of that and more. Yeah. But first. <laughs> but first. But first. 
live news. PartsCountGuru.com news. Here we go, guys. All right, so did you hear about the uh, the little uh, problem that uh, Corvette fans had at a recent uh, GM Corvette rally recently? Did you hear about wait that? Wait a second, wait a second, cold, wait a second. Cold shoulder. Corvette owners are unhappy and grumbling. Yeah, yeah, basically. <gasps> yeah, yeah, not, not no. good, man. Oh. Yeah, not really? good, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a first. And and here's the thing though, it, it, it's 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 not that they're unhappy about the new mid engine. It was uh, the cold shoulder that they got from a recent uh, recent uh, enthusiast rally. So basically, the headline was this: GM disappoints thousands of Corvette enthusiasts by not having the 2020 Corvettes at a Corvette Fun Fest. So Where was they, this said um, Fun Fest? This was in. Wow. Hold on a second. Oh, did, did I throw you a... You, you did. You threw me another one. It's uh, Mid-America Motor Works is the... Oh, that's... Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is it's what in it the is. Midwest. So, yeah. Exactly. Okay. So so they came from all over the world to see the new 2020 Corvette there, right? You would think yeah. that at a fun fest like this at Mid-America Motor Works that, um, that they would have that there. They said that the enthusiasts from Switzerland, Australia, Germany, and Canada represented some of the foreign Corvette enthusiasts while American Corvette owners drove from as far as Virginia and California and parts in between, hoping to catch a glimpse and maybe even test the seats of the all-new Corvette Stingray, which, by the way, Keith, you have. Um, yeah, so, you know, they did it at the 25th anniversary of the National Corvette Museum, but, you know, uh, that was right across the street from where they're building these things. Now, it's a big production they put on there. um you know, they put up a, a temporary building, and you know they had a lot of uh, a lot of work that went. That that road show is you. You can go to GM's website, and the, I we we'll put a link to the mentioned on a podcast mentioned on the podcast page uh, mm -hmm. if you're interested. But they're all over the country. They've got a road show, but for whatever reason, that road show just didn't decide to stop it. Yeah, the, and, and GM had some comments on it. You know they they oh they wanted, okay I gotta oh, hear yeah. this yeah yeah okay. they had some comments on it and they do mention the NCM you know the uh, that 25th yeah. anniversary um, that they were there but uh, according to uh, Mike uh, uh, GM uh, let's see what was it he goes there's reason the their reason is even more baffling they say no it wasn't the strike nor was it the fact that there are only six official show cars. According to Mike, GM now views Mid-America Motor Works as a competitor to their own Corvette parts and accessories business, despite the fact that the thousands of enthusiasts who attended the 26th annual Corvette Fun Fest are all potential buyers of the next generation Corvette. So um, they go on to say that uh, we know that organizations and, and events have been requesting the new Corvettes to come to their shows uh, and we get it uh, that with only six official show cars, the Corvette team needs to make strategic decisions on where to show them. But the reasoning that Mid-America Motor Works is now a competitor instead of a partner appears to ignore the history that the Corvette team has with Mid-America Motor Works and the Corvette enthusiasts who attempted to show their car every year. Wow. Here's what they said, too. Uh, this is Mid-America. Um, they said that the GM engineering tent... Uh, at Corvette Fun Fest was as uh, much of a part as a tradition of the show as the other activities offered. However, this year it was just an empty patch of grass. Nothing there. Crazy, man. So this is interesting. We're, we're getting ready to do... In fact, we it's in the can, so to speak. We shot... Um, a, you and I shot a video over the past week about auto parts, right? Mm -hmm. OEM, OEM versus yep. aftermarket and right. the differences between the two and whether or not it's good to buy things like wiper blades from the dealership and what what should you buy from the dealership and what shouldn't you buy from the dealership i think is is kind of where, where we the were going with this yeah and and i'm hearing in this article which i have not read that mm -hmm. gm considers this to be an oem parts competitor to them correct that's that's exactly right um you know and i will tell you something that's been trending 
I had this conversation with you about a week ago. And as you well know, Keith, I am in the business of research and development of the aftermarket world where uh, I get into cataloging. And and so I have to research specific resources uh, with resources that I have. And I've been using many OEM resources for many years and two of them that I've been using for probably 15 years have just recently locked the doors. They're not even available to uh, me anymore. Um, I don't know if that's a sign of what's going on. You know, is the OEM trying to recapture uh, the service part sales side uh, to gain some of that market back from the aftermarket? Hmm? It could Stay be. tuned, yeah. everybody, for some live interviews from the aftermarket show in Las Vegas, where we will discuss this very issue. We're gonna ask. We're gonna ask some people that question, my friend. Hey, Jay, Jay, did you know that I am also in the research and development? Uh, I, I do. I did do. you? You're supposed yeah. to say no. It, it, oh. you just yeah. Just, well, the but, joke but doesn't for, work if you say yeah. You, you, you have wait to, a minute. Yeah. No, I didn't. No, yeah, I didn't. Most of mine revolves around research and development of beer tasting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that job you've been looking for. No, wait a minute. You wanted to be the beer namer. Namer, yeah. What that could th- those could tie in together. Like you know, I could see me getting to taste one of the first few tasters of a new craft brew, and them handing it to me, and me going, "Oh, this tastes like motor oil." You know, I don't know, whatever. You but, know what, man? I, I've always envied those mixologists behind the bar because they get to, you know, they have to go, you know, their drinks have to go through a specific level of quality control. So they're always back there sampling that man. So God, you know, you sample a hundred drinks a night, man, you're, (laughs) you're, you're, yeah, well, that's another podcast. That could be ugly. Now you mentioned something about this strike, uh, in this, in this news article and the strike, Mm -hmm. not having uh, any impact impact on their appearance. Um, So unless you've been living under a rock for the past week, you know that GM, that, that there is a, an auto worker strike going on with GM right now. That's right. Um, any, any particular thoughts on that, Jay? Anything uh, that as you've been sort I mean, we've all been sort of catching clips of this. Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, I am wondering, you know, what is going on with all this right now? I know it, it has a lot to do with, um, you know, health insurance and, and, you know, they dropped, I think they dropped them uh, or they were reducing coverage or something like that is yeah. the way I understood it. Yeah. Um, they're cutting costs, man. Um, I, I know that has to happen, um, but it could be a strategy uh, for direction that, that, that GM or auto builders in general or, or you know, trying to go in a different direction more yeah. automation i think that's what we're seeing right in front of our eyes um and uh you know it let's face it it is a high cost to a manufacturer or an employer to provide those types of benefits yeah um and it it, it dramatically affects the bottom line for those guys but what i find weird is is the fact that you know look they just released the you know the Chevy Blazer, which if you want to call it a Blazer, I'm not a big oh, fan of it. I don't, we'll get I don't, to that in a minute. Yeah, I've got a special place that. in the podcast for that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but right. So, and then they, you know, you look at some of the things that GM has done, like you know, they, they're they're, it's like shock factor lately with these guys. You know, we're we're going away from the traditional front engine. We're going to a mid engine Corvette. Uh, well, they're recognizing b- the need for change. Um, you're either yeah. going to have to evolve or die. And I think right. if the workforce at the UAW isn't careful, they will also become part of that affected change yeah. and not in a good way. And and so look, this isn't I'm not this isn't a pro union statement or an anti union statement. This boils down to and Jay, you said this already, mm-hmm. um, how much does it cost to produce an automobile? And if you are GM and you've got so much in um, benefits to pay out and salaries to pay out that it's not cost effective for you to make that automobile, 
Mm -hmm. You are forcing their hand because if they can't stay price competitive with their competitors like Ford, like Toyota, like, uh, well, Jeep, I guess, Chrysler, whatever, Mm -hmm. then Mm -hmm. they're going to... They're, they will not be around in 10 years. And they've already taken bailout money once mm-hmm. um, in the in the past you know decade and a half. Um, look, man, I mean, the, you can't get blood from a turnip. Like, if you just keep raising the price and raising the price and raising the price, they don't have this magic, like, this isn't some leprechaun with a chest where they could just go reach in and grab more gold and pay, pay your wages. Like, they're out of money. Well, it, it, and that's it. I mean, they have to be very strategic about it because they could price themselves out of the market on yeah. their product. And, and, you know, with everything, with the onset of, of the trade war uh, with China that's going on, that has a huge impact on, on, on a lot of the goods. that they're, You know, let's face it, as these vehicles become more and more technologically advanced, they're relying on more electronics and computer components that are produced in China. Yeah. And, this this has an effect on on the auto worker uh, in the U.S. It has a direct impact um, because well, you know I read you an article automate- this week that and I didn't know this mm-hmm. and I don't have the article in front of me but they are apparently mm-hmm. now there is a trend of the seven year auto loan so you know it used to be sixty months which is what I think five years oh, and yeah. then they went to six years and now they're pushing seven. And the point of the article was Americans can't afford their cars, man. If they don't have the money to pay for these cars and the payments on the cars are too steep to do it in five years, that prices everybody out of a payment. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're now going to, okay, well, let's just make a seven-year loan. And, and that says that the ratio of the cost of that automobile is not in it's disproportionate it's not in line with the salaries people are making to pay for those cars oh exactly i mean there was a mention of uh uh in this one particular article that you have this was just came out just recently says the sticking points uh identified consist mostly of fixed costs that are compound compound on themselves fixed costs contribute to the to the 13 dollar per hour per employee more and overall labor costs that GM pays than its foreign-owned rivals operating in the United yep. States, according yep. to the Center for Automotive Research. Because they're Arbor. not union, and they're able right. to their 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 um, benefits packages cost mm-hmm. them less because of that. Right. And look again, whether you like unions or you hate unions, right, or you're indifferent, the competition is not always union. That's and right. if you're going to compete with them, you've got to find a way to be competitive on price. And and let's let's take a look at at a GM brand Saturn that was against the norm. Yeah, remember they were not yep. a union. And guess who's not around anymore? Yeah, well, I, I mean, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, there's a there's a there's you know what happened there. I mean, I think that has, there were a lot of factors in that. So that was sort of a, uh, in the wake of the big recession of 08, which caused a lot of that Mm -hmm. and the bailout caused a lot of that. And they looked at, you know, their numbers and Saturn's weren't selling, but then Saturn was a, you know, pay what we ask model. You know, they put the price tag on the window and that's what you paid. And they were trying to, they were playing around with a different sales model and, I don't know if it was just timing. You know, we weren't ready for that yet, or I, I'm not sure. I, I, I well, really that that's an interesting. Well, th- think about that though. I, I if if I remember correctly, there was a huge push though for the union uh, with Saturn um, prior to that, and and I don't like I said I don't know did that have any impact on it. Um, well, and, and again, look, if they're going to unionize and it it's going to cost you know 50 percent more per 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 employee and benefits mm-hmm. and the numbers aren't great I, if i'm a bean counter i'm looking at that going well you got to cut that one right well right Bye-bye, and that's Saturn. what that's what i'm saying and you know gm maybe looked at it in a tactful way during that time it just had to be it was advantageous to them because yeah. it was during the the uh the crash yeah um so it was i mean not only did they get rid of 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 those guys but um you know 
uh, a lot of other uh, brands that that we no longer see. Um, I mean, Pontiac is. Thank God. Oh, you know. <laughs> that, you know? Yeah. No, no love lost there between me and Pontiac. All right, uh, let's let's talk about big, something less depressing. But, but but I was a big fan of the Aztec. I just want you to know that. Oh my God. I know you're joking. I know you're joking. <laughs> if you have not seen that car, ladies and gentlemen, well, the, just, actually, it was a little bit ahead of its time. It was kind of a crossover. It, it was. You could do a lot of things with it. The The lift gate on it was right. uh, conducive for, for camping. They had little camping things to go but with it. But were... not built well. No. No. I mean, it was... A great it was, idea. Great yeah, idea. Was, yeah. It was... I don't know what you want to call it. But whenever I saw one of those, I always thought of the Klingons on... on yeah on star trek man yeah that's what that's what came to yeah. my mind right yeah one right? Of those, right? yeah 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 it was bizarre it was a strange looking, um yeah, looked like wharf yes you know? yes <laughs> um so what do you got what else you got all right i want to talk about spider-man yeah that's your that's your uh so your we go-to. so so we, we we reported on this um a few podcasts back there was this big clash between Sony uh, Movie Studios, who owns the rights to Spider-Man on screen, and M- Disney or Mo- the Marvel Cinematic uh, Marvel uh, Marvel Studios. Sorry, right? Who owns the movie rights for a vast majority of the rest of the Marvel characters? So Spider-Man is Marvel. He's part of the Marvel property, but right. Sony owns the movie rights. Mm-hmm. So there was a big breakup because. The, the, the last Spider-Man movie that came out, uh, far, I think it was Far From Home, was Sony's highest grossing movie ever. Uh, Marvel and their, their studio head, Kevin Feige, had a big part in the direction of that movie. And they were, you know, he helped kind of tie it all together with the rest of the Marvel movies and all that. And then I think there were some talks and negotiations and those talks fell apart. And Sony said, you know what? We got this. We're going on our own, which which meant that they could no longer have these other Marvel characters in the Spider-Man movies. Right. They were, and they were, and they, vice versa. Spider-Man couldn't were, be... Yeah. yeah. They shot themselves in the foot there, I thought. So I think just the collective internet lost their mind and went, what are you guys thinking? Which is kind of what I said on this. You know, like Sony, like if you're... If you're worried about money, try doing this without them and see how that goes for you. And to their credit... Sony has now backed up and the, you know, the relationship is back on again. And they said, you know, we're going to, we're going to, so, uh, last Friday they said, uh, they're going to do a third film with, uh, with a third Spider-Man film with Marvel studios Mm -hmm. and Kevin Feige will be a part of that. And it's, um, it's going to be the third in the homecoming series. So they're back. So that's good news. If you're a fan of, uh, Marvel and Spider-Man and all that. And let's just let's just bring this to the forefront as well. Where what streaming service will that movie never play on now? Well, get I'm for probably Netflix for sure. Yeah. <laughs> right, that's what I'm saying, man. Yeah, you know, and you know Disney's Disney and got their, their streaming, own. Yeah, yeah, they got their own streaming service. So, you know, which by the way, speaking of streaming services, um, I'm all thinking about signing up for that Apple TV Plus. I know. Man. I, I was, wish you would, so gonna, you can tell me how um, it is, and then I can decide well, whether I want it or not. I've got some store credit. My wife and I were talking about that. She's like, "What do you?" I'd say, "Well, you just, we just don't, you know. Let's let's go and uh, let's try this Apple TV Plus. We we like uh, we like, like I always sh- say, Jay. Better your money than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Good to be here for you, buddy. Uh-huh. Good to be Thanks, here man. for you, man. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, what else we want to talk about? Uh, what do you else? got? You got it. I got well, one more. Um, go for it, man. I I had two. I had two already. You go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, DoorDash. Have you ever used DoorDash? I've never used it, but I've heard of it. Um, I'm not so lazy that I can't go out and get my stuff, so I don't. I don't so, need that sort of stuff, and I don't want anybody riding around with my food. And this is a just a yeah. Well, I understand that. So this yeah. is just we're just gonna file this in the public service announcement category. I, you guys, okay. Like, hang on a second. I need to, I need to talk to our audience. Okay, guys, mm-hmm. guys, listen to me. Listen to me. Okay, I'm, I'm just I'm begging you, stop using your birth date, your mother's maiden name, or one two three four as your password. Okay, please how, stop that nonsense. Stop it. How many times have we said that to people um, on this on this show? 
I mean, we've been talking about this for episodes. I just did a project this week for a client that was around banking security and um, this kind of stuff goes on on a daily basis. Okay, the mm -hmm. big ones are hitting the, the news almost monthly now, but uh, 4.9 million customers in the DoorDash breach. Um, things like their all their sensitive info, passwords, address. Uh, what else? What else? Um, I mean, basically anything that you store now. Now, some of it is encrypted, but still, man, I mean, mm -hmm. if you're using one, two, three, four, they're going to guess that they're going to throw a dictionary cracker at it and you're yeah. you're done. So um, and then it, you may think, well, so, well, yeah, except that you probably let them store that credit card on file. And so, yep, there you go. Yeah. Hope it wasn't. I hope it wasn't a debit card. Exactly. People never use your debit card for such services. Get yourself a credit card. Um, There's so much fraud out there, man. It's so unsafe for you. Yeah, this isn't going to change. This is not going away. No. And to be honest with you, the, the security in most of these industries is so sloppy that it's just, it's just, you know, it's just, it's just easy to hack. So yeah, uh, yeah. I'm just filing this under, you know, again, public service, guys. Please, it's if it's going to be somebody else next week and the week after that, this is not going to stop. Nope. Use a good, use a good password program like One Password or uh, LastPass, which is now owned by Google. Um, just just stop stop using like dictionary words as your password right yeah it's and um, don't put them on sticky notes and tape them to your screen either right please right or store them in your phone uh, in your notes i mean Un unlocked yeah unlocked i mean that's hackable man you can get into it and people can get what they need speaking of phones man can i give a little psa real quick on, on uh, Apple? <laughs> yeah go ahead yeah Man, I have never been so disappointed in my entire life with a rollout of an update to an iOS. This new iOS 13, people, I'm telling you right now, it is the worst update that I have ever experienced with Apple. It is, I have, my phone is not even a year old. It's the 10s, and it is so messed up right now from this last update i was telling keith this morning i was out filming some video and uh siri just would not leave me alone and um why that's happening i have no idea i've reported it to apple and i want to say to everybody out there that if you're experiencing this stuff don't just put the phone down and wait for them to update you have the right to uh send that information into apple as a matter of fact you agree to that uh, in a lot of cases, and you don't even know it, um, but you should report that stuff so they can get get this fixed for all of us. So, but it's just a growing trend. Don't you find that to be the case, Keith? With yeah. These so there's um, there's this growing trend of you know fix it after we release it. You know the old joke yeah. of if Microsoft made cars, right? But yeah. um, I, you know what? And I almost kind of want to open this up and say you know go go. Go drop us a note on our website at partscounterguru.com. There's an Ask Us a Question tab. Um, tell us what you want to hear on the next podcast. I am really tempted to try to convince Jay to do a podcast on this and the future of... Th this, is, this is the thing, man. This is the meeting that Apple needs to have. Mm -hmm. I, I can lay it out for you start to finish this is the meeting i'm not going to tell you what that meeting is you'll have to watch but, but and and i sent you an article or just just a few minutes before we started the podcast yeah. from microsoft and mm -hmm. we can talk about that maybe if we do this this future podcast but microsoft has had that meeting they have had that meeting and the proof is in some of the concept stuff that they're now rolling into yeah. production that'll be out in the next year I had a chance to kind of read over a little bit of that. That's interesting yeah. technology yeah. they have coming out, and and they're 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 innovative, man. They're 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 doing things I, that others. And I'm Apple's anything not doing but Mister yeah. Pro Microsoft, right? Like I was trained right. on Apple stuff and certified yeah. in Apple stuff, and yeah, yeah. I've, uh, I've 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 certainly found that some of my Microsoft equipment that I have has become more reliable than my Apple gear. Yeah. Um, now, sad, sadly, because I love Apple so much. I mean, they I both have my, their flaws, but yeah, they're, they're, the, that meeting on the Microsoft side has already happened. So, so this phone update, 
I'm already it updated, and then like six hours later, there was another update to the update. It's thirteen. <laughs> it's it's a thirteen point one point two is where it's at right now. Yeah, and counting and counting. So 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 there you go. This is my advice to. Well, Jay's already heard it, but yeah, to and everybody. I knew better. I knew better. Turn I off waited. auto update on the apps and the OS. Yeah. And then wait a month. Yeah. Especially I should have done that. when it's a major ro- uh, OS update. Now, if it's just a, in, they call it incremental. So if right. it's like the dot, right? Like 10.1 or 10.1.2 and and yeah. you're, you're upgrading from 10.1.1 to 10.1.2, mm-hmm. fine. That's right. That's probably just some bug fixes, patches, you're fine, security patches. But when it's a major OS update version changes from 10 to 11, right. from 9 to 10, from 11, 12 to 13. Sit on that for a good month. Listen to your friends scream about how it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. then and then you make the change after that after your friend once again, you know, right better yeah. you than me. <laughs> mm. yeah. After your friend tells you things are fine. <laughs> and w- one thing I will tell you that this this thing did is it it changed a lot of my settings, um, yeah. which I have not experienced in the past. It usually left my settings alone. Well, they're moving to toward this. Um, they're moving towards a gesture based operating system where there's no home mm-hmm. button anymore. All the new stuff is now without a well, home button. Well, funny thing is, man, is uh, you know Siri couldn't see me flipping her off this morning. <laughs> so Siri, you're number one. Right, um, so that gesture, that gesture wasn't working. So, so hey, let, let's uh, let's get on with our um, let's get on with our subject matter for the day, right. man. You you ready to talk about I, this? I, I am. Let me let me take a momentary commercial pause here to remind folks a um, couple things. Um, if you are enjoying this program, please tell a friend. Um, we are. We the, we have a video version of this podcast, which we call The Counter Show. It's on YouTube. Um, you can get to that by searching for Parts Counter Gurus on YouTube, mm. and you will find our channel. We like to give out random uh, awards and rewards and drawings and contest stuff to our... Right now, we're using our public YouTube subscribers list. So if you subscribe, make sure it's a public subscription so we can mm-hmm. see your name. That's and right. uh, we're not doing one today. That's why it's called random people, because you never exactly. know. Exactly. Um, but we draw from well, that. Well, go ahead. Let me just let me just say this and add into that. If if you want to really get some cool gear, because there is so much swag at these at SEMA and Apex, I will guarantee you, I will walk out of there with enough to check a have to check a bag on the way back, and somebody's getting that stuff somebody's getting that stuff. There's some cool stuff in Vegas, man. So we'll see. Yeah. So you got, you've got to subscribe and you've got to be public in order to, uh, to, uh, receive the, uh, confirmation or notification because that's how we pick you as keepers. That's, safe, that's how we so. roll. That's right. So, that's, that's um, it. so please subscribe on YouTube. That's a big favor to us. Make sure to give us a thumbs up and hit the bell and you'll get notified when we get, uh, uh, when, when, when a new video drops, um, yep. You can find the audio podcast by going to our website and clicking on the podcast links tab. Yep. And Several. Lists, we're, we're on all of them. All um, of them. And we are a video podcast on the Apple side as well. So if you're into the Apple stuff. If you can get iOS 13 working, feel free to subscribe <laughs> to our podcast on right. uh, <laughs> on Apple yeah. podcast right that's a, that's a good that's a good point man that's a good point well you know just in case you're in you know you know the mood for new technology and stuff you know we also have an Amazon tab up there in the upper right hand corner of our our, our website there, and good, you, good call good you, call yeah if you if you click on that so if you're looking for that new phone that new gadget man go ahead and click on the Amazon link there and uh, if you purchase uh through that, it, that uh, we get a little love. Uh, now we what? can't see that transaction, man. That's right. Well, we can't tell. It, it's anonymous. We can't tell what it is or who yeah. it is or anything yeah. like that. It's you leave. We're we're basically the front door to get in. Now, That's how, what's our website? We're at uh, cards. Cards. God, I knew I'd mess it up today, man. I just been, I had a bad week. I've had a bad week. Okay, so we are uh, parsecountguru.com. 
and uh, that's where you can get us, man. So all right, thanks. Yeah, Thank you, you. Bet, man. Good all job. Right. Good job. Yeah, man. and so. you. Hey, man. It's uh, it's it's uh. Uh, we're 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 pushing ourselves pretty hard here to deliver some some I- I better content and some new content. And there's a lot of stuff about to drop, and so I've been working Jay pretty hard. You know, you 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 get that horse home, and you've been you know riding him hard. You gotta you gotta let him you gotta let him uh, you know. Yeah, well, you know what? You, I've been it's, watching it's, westerns, man. I'm sorry. It's, I, it's well, the best analogy. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, not all that though. I, I, I do. I, I feel like I'm, I'm in the running for the triple crown or something yeah. right now, man. And that's, I just, you know, yeah, that's a that's a big deal. So anyway, so let's talk about this thing, man. All right. It's, so uh, so Ford yeah. years ago said, "Hey, we're bringing back the Bronco." Yeah. yeah. And they have been very tight lipped about a lot of the specifics. Mm-hmm. But they are. There's a couple things we do know. I uh, believe they have confirmed that it's going to be built on the Ranger platform, T6 platform. Yep. Thank yep. you. See, this is this is why I have Jay here because you know I just <laughs> generally get it in the ballpark, and then he like finds the. If you're a golf fan, he like finds the actual hole and puts it in. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, man, we know I that good at golf. they were targeting a 2020 release. Is that right? Do we know that uh, for sure? They were, but they're not going to make it. It, it. it seems. Now, I'll, I'll say this: I've heard rumor something's going. Something is boiling in November, and what I'm excited about is the fact that we're going to be at SEMA yeah. in November. Yeah, and SEMA would not be a bad idea. For people, the largest that, North American auto show. It, uh, pff, what? Who would want to do? Who would want to release a vehicle at something like that, man? Right, <laughs> right, right. So, so there you tons go. Tons of I mean, press coverage. Tons of media guys like us there with uh, iPhones that may or may not be working to record video and live stream it. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I can't imagine that. You know, that would be a terrible way to go, right? Free yeah, press, exactly. exactly. A room full of of reporters. Yeah, I think that what they're going to try to do is, uh, you know, give it a release for 2020. But um, there's speculation that production on it may not really allow it uh, to be um, out there uh, at dealerships until the 2021 model well, year, which is, you know, which makes fine. sense. Yeah, I mean, that's that's, that's that's OK. But there's a there's been a lot of uh, folks out there catching glimpses of the camouflage vehicle. Um and and I've seen pictures of it. Yeah, so um, we've I, I've I seen have, them too. I now have, I have my own opinion on it. But when um, Jay says camouflage, let me explain what that means. Not hunting camo. Right. They put digital uh, decals on these vehicles, and what it's supposed to do is make it harder for the camera to focus and for you to get actual depth of field to see what the car kind of looks like. And and they right. usually paint them in light colors, like white. And so you can't quite get the body design. And, and, and they do this when they take them out on the road to road test them, but before they've been released to the public. We got a lot right. of Corvette kind of went it, kind of jokingly when they gave us their press announcement for the 2020 back this mm-hmm. summer. The picture on the cover of that press announcement was that car in digital camo. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um. So, so we, so. We decided to come up with. We're going to keep this to five, this list to five. I think um, five things Ford needs to do with the Bronco to make it great. And you could t- you could also say you know or not do right because there's going to be some of that on my list. But I think and I just from the, kind of reading in between the lines and listening to what you're saying, Jay. I think you've got mm-hmm. some ideas on this too. Oh, I um, have a lot of ideas on it. And- you know, but I, I think you and I may kind of overlap on some of these things. I'm sure we will. Well, you know, let me first say this. It, 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 if you guys haven't already figured out, Keith is an FJ Cruiser owner and lover. And um, there's a reason for that. Uh, it's uh, it's right up your alley, man. It's it's utilitarian. It 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 handles. It gets you there. It's expandable. You can, and when I say that, you can accessorize this thing. Um, there were a lot of smart things that Toyota did with this this vehicle. Um, so, 
what I'm going to segue into that is is that now FJ that's that's an electric vehicle right no <laughs> sorry yeah go ahead that that be not an electrical <laughs> vehicle um, but uh, you know the the thing is is that I, what I want to say number one is that Ford can really really hit this thing out of the park but they've got a lot of competition out there you got to beat Jeep man you got to beat the Wrangler you got to beat the Gladiator there's your competition okay so let, let's 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 clarify that just a little bit further so when the FJ stopped production okay so back to this economic crash of 2008 mm-hmm. that happened kind of right in the middle of this FJ rollout it had been out for a couple years I think mm-hmm. and that's then right. that happened and everybody immediately went nope I need a car that's going to get 40 miles to the gallon Mm-hmm. And I can't afford to put gas in my car otherwise, right? right so it was right. really bad timing from Toyota's part, although they necessar- they didn't necessarily have control over that. Mm-hmm. But the sales really started to dwindle. Now that the economy is back up and people are... Bu- I mean, all these car manufacturers are announcing, hey, we're going to stop making most of our cars, most of our sedans. We're shifting to trucks and SUVs and crossovers because that's what everybody wants. That's what everybody's mm-hmm. buying. Okay, Fine example of that. Fine example of that, and sorry to break in on you there, but let's. You have your own take on this, and I, I don't want to take take your thunder away. But we were we were going to discuss the Chevy Blazer, yeah, and yeah. GM's attempt to bring back the Blazer. It's not. It's um, not a it's Blazer. Not. It's, it's it's a Blazer it's, in name only. It doesn't look anything. A, it doesn't do no. anything like the original Blazer did. It's not even no. close. Not so even close. That's all marketing. That's all smoke and mirrors. But now we have this void when the FJ stopped being make, made. And Toyota mm-hmm. kind of has, you know, but they're not quite the same. You know, they've got right. the Forerunner, whatever. Then Jeep right. stepped up, and now Jeep's got like seven different models. They've got the Gladiator with the pickup bed in the back. They've got which is yeah, yeah. They've got I mean, all. The, they've got go look at you know some of the stuff they're offering. Their their sales are off the charts right now with these things. Okay, they sh- and, they sure are, and there's a lot of reasons that they are off the and charts. So there was first, this first void of, in the market, mm-hmm, and people that's went, exactly right. I, I gots to have me an Overland vehicle. Where can I get That's one? Right. Well, Jeep's really the only contender right now. So I think that that is, is a great segue into where I think you and I are going to agree on on one of the things that, that Ford has to do to compete, man. And that is focus on that market. I think the, that if they want to hit this thing out of the park, they have to introduce something to the market that is going to directly compete with the, with the Jeep product that they can accessorize it, um, you know that it that it gets out there just like a Jeep does. Okay, and that's just one one piece of it. I mean, there's more to that, but okay. So here, so let's go. That's why I brought. That's why I brought the FJ up. By the way, all right. So let's that's why do. I brought it up. This is going to be a recurring theme, as well as that crappy Blazer. Hey, I don't have anything again. I love the new Corvette. I am not a GM hater. Guys, let's be honest. If you've seen or been in or around that Blazer. The new one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. All right. So yeah. five things Ford needs to do with a Bronco to make it great. Jay, you want to go first on this one? Yeah, I'll All take right. one. Okay. Number five. What's Jay's number number fifth reason? The fifth reason for me, I think that um, to, in, to, to make it great, I, I think you're going to have to offer a manual transmission option. I, 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 I Ooh, believe you're going to have to do that's that. That's a good one. And, and Why? the reason, well, because if you're an off-roader, man, I mean, you want that. People in vehicles like that like to have that. Now, granted, they're, they're the the information that's out there, it's going to have the same tranny that the uh, that the Ranger has in it, the automatic transmission. And currently, in North America, there is no standard transmission or manual transmission offer uh, offering in that particular vehicle. Um, so. You know, as an enthusiast, an off-roadist, you know, somebody that likes to go, you know, they like manual transmissions, man. They like having that type of control. Um, that's my opinion on it. What's your thought on the manual okay. transmission? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give you my number five because these are these are right there. This is weird, man. It's like we talked. Mm. We did not talk and we about did this not before talk. the show. We did not talk okay. about this. So what I said for number five was to make the four-wheel drive actually good in camping, hunting, off-road conditions, mm-hmm. that it's a true four-wheel drive. So so most of you, if, you, if you're not a, 
like a car mechanic, mm-hmm. a lot of these four wheel drive pickup trucks that Chevrolet and Ford are rolling out in their F series and the Silverado series, it's not really a four wheel drive, meaning all four wheels are not turning at the same time all the time right. if you put it in right. four. It's going to have some limited slip going on where you know one wheel might turn but the other one may not and a lot of that's electronically controlled and there's reasons right. for that but a lot of those reasons are built around pavement stability not Correct. off-roading that's right now that's right when i bought my fj i went with the automatic transmission but but mm-hmm. okay toyota has something called crawl control and that's an acronym it's crawl but c-r-a-w-l but it it actually stands for something but here's what it here's what it boils down to and if you have not experienced this the first time you try to use this i remember like going out and reading the book the manual and then going and playing with this thing Mm -hmm. it freaked me out so here's what they tell you to do is you put the car in four-wheel drive take your feet completely off the pedals do not touch them keep your feet on the floor keep them off the pedals do not touch the foot pedals at all right Right. There's a knob, and you dial that knob, and and there's charts in the book, and it says like if you're on ice, you want it on about a three, and if you're on you know mud, you want it on about a two or whatever, mm-hmm. and you literally are four wheeling and adjusting the crawl control of the knob, which tells that transmission how to control power mm-hmm. to each wheel and how much power to send to each wheel so that it doesn't slip. Right. And they got it right. And, and and they did a really good job with that on the automatic side and I felt like that's perfect. You know, I'm not Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not in these Baja races where I needed something automatic or something manual, but same concept, right? You want yeah. control over your four-wheel drive. So I agree with you. Ford needs to do something with that transmission mm-hmm. and the four-wheel drive system so that it's not like their pickup truck four-wheel drive. Right. I mean, if you're shooting for that market, you're going to have to make some adjustments. And, and again, we're just speculating that the transmission is going to be the same that's in the in the Ranger right now. Ugh. I mean, that's so we we, we don't know. Uh, we can only go off of what leaked information is out there. So based on what we've heard, this is where I've drawn that conclusion that I think that they should focus on a manual transmission. I think it would be good for them anyway. I agree. So because it's not there's not you know Jeep Jeep has has an option. So that, that's go. weird that your number five and my number five were kind of the same, but close, yeah. close, yeah. But that's cool that, that that crawl. I mean, for some of you people, I mean, it, it's it's uh, yeah, this is probably a poor analogy, but for an automobile like Hill Assist or something, you know, or something like that, you know, it just it, it takes over that. And for you to be able to drill that in with with the, well, the crawl control on it's, that is pretty interesting. It's surreal, man. Like you have to unlearn everything that you know because the the first instinct is you know if you're you're not going over smooth terrain a lot of times you're no you know we've taken this thing out in the desert or the high desert in Utah or whatever and you're jumping over sometimes logs, big boulders, rocks, and that <laughs> and my family's yeah. in the back seat, you know, yeah. hanging on, screaming and <laughs> right, right. And you're bouncing, man, and your instinct yeah. is to hammer the brakes, right? Right. Right. Well, you're only doing one or two miles an hour, if that, and you can literally take that knob and put it right to zero and the thing stops. It's in four wheel drive. It's at at that speed it's the same thing as applying the brakes. It just stops right. the transmission. Yeah. So it's it's you just got to unlearn. You got to just tell yourself, don't touch the pedals, don't touch the pedals. And because right. the second that you touch the pedals, it turns all that off. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, t- there's technology out there that if again, if they do it right, they can get away with an yep. automatic transmission if they do it right. But I haven't seen that yet. So I can't again, yeah. I can only speculate. And that's why my suggestion would be. Yeah. Throw a manual transmission yeah. in there. Sure. So we agree. So yeah. go ahead on your number. No, you uh, go. We're gonna. Are you, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. We're gonna do this. Uh, I, I'm intentionally doing this so I get to go last. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. So so I. You know. Number this four. Is not, Jay's number, number four, four. Number four. This is this is not on the mechanical side. This has more to do with you know. I mean, I go back. I shared with. With Keith this morning, I found the original one of the original um, uh, commercials from like in the late '60s for the Bronco. For, for the Bronco, and that was such a fascinating piece for me because of what it was marketed as. Ah, uh, do you what do you remember what they said? What did they say? Well, I mean, it was. I, it I was, got it. If you want me to, well, I'll say utilitarian. 
it was it was a uh, it was a, a, a an SU uh, sport utility. It was a wagon. It was a truck. Uh, it was smooth on the highway. I mean, it it met everybody's needs. So that's. I, that's We'll try to put Go a ahead. link to that commercial because it, it was pretty it's cool. It's really cool, man. Their marketing team used in that commercial the term the world's first four-wheel drive sports car. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that part of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, Think that's about that be for the a minute. Four- four-wheel drive yeah. sports car. Now, yeah. to them in the 60s, this was before all-wheel drive, right? Well, speaking of the Bronco... And the Mustang, speaking of sports cars, I think Lee Iacocca may have had a hand in the in the design of the of the uh, Bronco as well. well. In that commercial, they actually show a rodeo guy on a bucking Bronco, mm-hmm. back getting, you know, trying to get bounced off, and then they show that Bronco taking some pretty hard jumps, you know, right. over. I mean, it's that suspension's. I'm surprised it didn't bottom out on him. It probably did. Well watching it and you see those the people just you know it's a bench seat and they're they're barely, <laughs> yeah. they're barely strapped in no doors and they're going down riverbeds man and you know dry beds and stuff and it's like whoa man you know yeah. and that, that goes back to what we you know we used to ride in the back of a pickup truck man you can't do that anymore it's 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 very unsafe it was it was a pretty unsafe vehicle back then man let's just say that but that for the time it was you know for what it was being marketed as and and you know what you could do with it it was just an awesome vehicle it really yeah. was it was it was certainly good for ford so um but my number four i i i have down that that i think that it needs to have its own identity okay oh, this and is so I, weird this is and, so weird okay go right, ahead and, yeah and, and 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 what i'm saying with that is is that okay so when you look at a ford explorer okay and you look at a rover they look identical yeah of course they are you know they're using like platforms and engines and those sorts of things but it's hard to tell them apart if you're not looking at the badges it really doesn't look like it's its own thing so for me for the bronco to stand out it needs to recapture some of the aesthetics that the original broncos had like the like the round the big round headlights and and you know just uh some of the the boxiness around it you know which i think in today's technology with our our ability to stamp panels and what panels are made out of and just the you know the body materials you can get away with all that this is not let's face it it's not going to be an aerodynamic vehicle it's not that's not what we want this to be we want this to be a utilitarian type vehicle an off-roader so focus on that. Make it look like what it should be. Now, I saw some images, and I wanted to bring this in, in into the picture for you, and I sent you a little, little link to it. But down in Brazil, uh, they offer a vehicle, which is called the Novo Troller. Did you see that, Keith? Uh, let's see if I can pull it up here. I got it. I got it. Yep. Okay. I'm looking at it right For- now. Ford bought those guys back in 2012, I believe it was. Oh. And they are mm, running the T4. How interesting. T4 platform. Um, so could it be that Brazil has been the test market for the upcoming Bronco? I don't know. Um, but it sure looks like it could be. The Troller T4 is, a, this is from Wikipedia, uh, the yeah. Troller T4 is a four-wheel drive vehicle made by Troller, uh, I'm not even going to try to say that, uh, there's two other <laughs> words after Troller, is available only as a two-door car with a fiberglass body and steel chassis with a design inspired by the Jeep. It has a standard four-wheel drive, a spy, five-speed Eaton manual transmission, and Dana axles. The engine is a 3.0 liter turbo diesel. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Built yeah, by MWM and was introduced in 2004. Ford Motor Company purchased Troller in 2007. Uh, Seven, okay. In 2014, the Troller T4 received a major redesign and is now being built on a shortened version of Ford's T6 platform for the Global Ranger. Hello. The current version looks more like the modern form of the Jeep Wrangler and early model Ford Bronco. Hello there, people. Hmm. Do we do our research or what? <laughs> Good job, Jay. So, yeah. uh, 
Okay, so I just need to ask you something. Um, sure. Did you hack into my note account and look at my nope. top five list before this show? Nope. You copied he from did. me. You copied, didn't you? No. Nope. You nope. look. You were Dude, looking I'm, over my shoulder on the test. I I can tell, man. It's it's just like you know when when I when I stumped my toe the other day, you had that pain in your foot too, man. You know, it's just <laughs> that's just how we operate, yeah. man. We're on the same wavelength, dude. All right, that's just that's that's why we're that's why we're business partners, my friend. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna go into this in any more detail than just to read you n- my number four, okay? Because okay. I think okay. you you've already covered my number four in in pretty great detail. My number four okay. said, be different. There's already a Jeep and there's already a Toyota. Don't make mm-hmm. Ford's version of those vehicles. That's right. It's basically what you said. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you don't let's let's look at what what did Ford do when they brought back the Mustang? They took every element of the original Ford Mustang that they could. Yeah. With with modern technology, with modern yeah. uh, manufacturing um, capabilities. Um and I think they hit it out of the park because it looks like the Mustang. Yeah, it's a Mustang. Now they could have. Yeah. You look right. at that and you go, "That's a Mustang." Yeah. Right now, late, later, later years, I'm not so happy about it. Um, it looks more Euro to me now. Yeah, um, I, I'm not a big fan of, of that. But you know, you knew it was bound to happen because of the platforms that are out there. If you look at a Jaguar, I forget what model it is. Maybe it's an S model. Um, it kind of kind of looks like a mustang it's to a the degree f type is that the f type yeah okay that's my dream so there you go that's my next automobile yeah, yeah. so there you go that um, is keith's top top three cars under a hundred thousand dollars that he would buy yeah yeah during a midlife crisis for are they with a still two-seater. Owned, are they still owned by tata ah uh, it's been passed around a little bit i'm not sure I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, I know that they were they were once owned. If they may still. I know be owned the by CEO. That, there was some, there were some visionary changes not too long ago, and basically mm-hmm. they said, look, this whole Jaguar that was your grandfather's Jaguar with the wood paneling, and that's nah, we're not doing that anymore. We're right. They're sticking to right. the you know the gentleman's steed kind of thing, like like Aston Martin does. But but yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so. So now this is where it could get really weird because now we're, you know, we're two for two here. If we, if we hit the over, you know, if we hit the halfway mark here with number three and we're still in sync. <laughs> this is kind of right. bizarre. Okay. So, so I'm going in with my number three then? Yeah. Let's have your number okay. three. Okay. I think that if Ford really wants to appeal to the audience out there because you, Ford's kind of in a, they're in a situation and I understand it. They're they're probably thinking big picture. Okay, we want to sell a lot of vehicles and we want to reach a lot of people. How can we do that? I know where he's going with this. This is super weird. Okay, go ahead. So, speculation is is that they're going to have like a two point three liter EcoBoost in them, two point seven liter. Yeah, I think there should be a small V eight option available. Which they can do. They've proven to do well, it. Well, and the original I, um, Bronco had a V8 option. Yeah, and they've absolutely. got truck engines that they could use yeah. in the F series that are small V8s, yeah. right? They had the five they had the five liter in. I think at one point they had three fifty ones in them. Yeah. You know? So, you know, they had they had, you know, big V eights in them. Well, they had small block. Um, but my other point to this is is that, you know, diesel engine from a towing standpoint, I think diesel may be a good idea as well. But I think also, too, they need to appeal to a broader market and maybe look at maybe an electric version or a hybrid version. And their, their, um, everything is right at their fingertips because of their recent uh, investment into Rivian. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that they, they, they're going to have some technology that's going to lead them maybe into maybe an all-electric version of it. And I think that that would be appealing to people. Right. Because um, you're, you're faced with – the one thing you talked about with the FJ was the fact that it got terrible – the fuel economy is oh, not that it great. was a brick brick and water, man. Right. I mean <laughs> – So how do, you, how, do you, how do you go after fuel economy and low emissions is you have to look at those, those options and – with the with the lower displacement, you know, uh, four cylinders and maybe a V six, 
um, with direct injection um, makes it a lot more fuel efficient, um, a lot more cleaner air. The diesel um, becomes fuel efficient. Um, so, I mean, I'm just thinking that they need to have several upgrades to the engine side. And I think that if they do like a, like a Raptor version of it or something, yeah, that you yeah. might see some of that happening. Yeah. You know, but but give the option. Have the option out there. Don't just stick a four cylinder in it and think that everybody's gonna like that. Yeah. Don't stick with one engine platform on this thing. Yeah, I so, agree. So that's so that's my number three. Uh and that would set them apart and that would set them off as, as different because you know, when you go out and you buy a forerunner or the the previously manufactured FJ, you didn't really have multiple engine options. You could get transmission options, but not engine options. I believe that the Wrangler, you have a diesel option. That's Jeep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And see, let's face but it. But that's because Chrysler is, they've been Europeanized yeah. a little bit. And uh, that's it's Fiat. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's Fiat. It's, um, um, Fiat's diesel market is huge. Yeah. I mean, they, they're doing over the road hauler stuff. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's out there. I mean, I, I did a lot of research on that for aftermarket repair components, you know, in, in, in my previous, previous occupation your other and, life uh, actually yeah. my other life and i'm actually doing a little bit of it now now excuse me um so so there you go um that's my number three man i don't know if it was on your same wavelength all right well doesn't sound, doesn't sound like it was. it was actually more in line with my number two but number three for oh, me okay mm-hmm. it needs to be aftermarket friendly okay so everything Ooh. we're talking about and the crowd ah. that we're that we're a, the target demographic for this vehicle yeah see this is weird man um, Jay just held up a number two for those of you listening. Um, that 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 lines up, I think, with his number two. <laughs> not he has not that he has to use the bathroom. I think he's actually saying that lines up with my number two. So oh, I would just walk out if I had two minutes. Sorry. The uh, <laughs> the the crowd that buys these off road vehicles is um they are happy go lucky with modding. They mm-hmm. want light bars. They want. Yep. It rooftop camping they want gas tanks uh they extra gas Win- tanks winch, winches winches custom bumpers um yeah. uh, you know flares I, fender flares i've, I've got a i've got a uh off-road fridge and our uh sorry an automotive off-road fridge in the back of my fj that i can literally run for days and it'll keep food back there if i want to camp in it you got to be able you got to make this thing so it's friendly to all of those aftermarket components if you make it so that it's too difficult to mod and put add-ons that right. that crowd is going to weigh you against the jeep which already has tons of aftermarket options out there and they're going to go jeep because they can customize it to right. the way that they want it ford listen listen man i'm telling you right now think of harley davidson think of jeep and what they do People like to accessorize it. They like to have their own identity with their vehicle. Yeah. Now, instead of... So I'm with you on that. Instead of making 135 different versions of the same vehicle, make a couple, but make them Mm -hmm. customizable in the aftermarket. Then that reduces your production costs. Mm -hmm. You're just rubber stamping out the same thing, but... That's right. You can put your own flavor on it, which people are going to do anyway, right? That's Not right. there's very That's few right. people that are just going to leave that thing factory and want to take it camping and not do something to it. That's exactly right. And you brought up a good point about, and this is again, I, I that's on my list. We we're we're so on the same page here. I'm just going to go ahead and just bring it in because that's my next one. Yeah. It's number two. That was your number three. And let's. I'll go ahead. And my point on that is is that. With with the uh, increased interest and love for camping, the rooftop camping stuff is huge, man. And they need to really focus on a rack that just automatically can accept that. Make it a real rack, man. Um, don't make it you know to where you, you have to remove it to put something else on make it go take a look at what's available out there tent wise yeah roof and and do your homework on it and make sure that you're already set to take every single tent that it's made out there and i guarantee you, you'll make a lot of people happy yeah i would buy one if i don't have to if all i have to do is go buy a vehicle and then i don't have to go buy a rack and install it and go through all that hassle and i can just go buy a tent slap it up there and i'm good man i'm happy 
That's, yep. That would be so smart for them to do that. The other thing, too, Keith, and I know you, you know, my point on my number two is go ahead and wire the thing up for things that you think people yeah. are going to be adding to this. You know, Toyota kind of did that with the FJ. There's there's wire harnesses sitting in places where yeah. people figured out they were like, oh, look at this. Well, it's pre-wired for off-road lights. Oh, look at this. Can, there's a AC think, behind the back panel right. where you can plug in a fridge. Yeah. Exactly. And, and and think of your RV. Yeah. Your RV. We we talk, we installed solar panels on your RV. You already had a lot of the wiring done. Yep. All you had to do is mount them yeah. and connect, right? Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. I mean, so that's what Ford needs to be doing. And think for the consumer before the consumer even thinks they want that. That's kind of how that's kind of how Apple. Steve Jobs yeah. did it with yeah, Apple. Yeah. yeah. You know? You know, the people don't know what they want until they can find out they can have it. So there you go. That's amazing, man. That was my number two, So, uh, which ties into your number three. So go with your number two. All right. My number two is going to fit right in with this, which is okay. make it a Bronco and not a Ranger with a second or third row. Ah, okay. Amen, brother. So yes. look, so now bonus points. Listen up, Ford. Bonus points. Mm-hmm. If you make that back section removable like the original mm-hmm. bronco or like the right. original toyota forerunner so you've got kind yeah. of a camper shell situation so there's no break in the cab meaning you know it's not a pickup truck where you've got an obvious sec- separation in between the like, passenger cabin and the pickup bed right it's all right. unibody so to speak it's all one piece mm-hmm. but then you can pull that back portion off mm-hmm. like a jeep right put some roll right. bars in there now right. you're competing directly with the Jeep crowd because you've got a little bit of a convertible thing going on, right? Outdoorsy That's types right. love that stuff, man. Got myself right. an off-road convertible. So funny. We're so close on all this stuff, man. Yeah. No, you're right. I, I That was, that was uh, some of the things that I had written down to go as part of this and to, as talking points. And, and, and I agree with that. You know, it's like the... Like the doors, removable doors, the yeah, um, uh, all of that. You well, know. there's a patent that somebody dug up that Ford filed that. for removable doors with safety beams in them. So that may be coming. Now we don't know for what vehicle or if it's even going to hit a vehicle anytime soon, but right. it could go into this. That's right, it could. And uh, there's a lot of thought that has to go in that from safety sa- standpoints. You know, with airbags and and so there. Yeah, you can't just be like Jeep and just let people you know die. <laughs> no, <laughs> right. I'm just kidding. Right. Man. I, it, you I, know, you you know that's the one thing that the you know these manufacturers do strive for for vehicle safety. They want that high safety rating, and and they would be fools not to really focus on that. And if it compromises some of your offering, um, then it is what it is. But that's why I saw the same information about the patent that's that, that's been out there, um, and apparently uh, there wouldn't be any bolt or anything. It's just a lift off hinge. Sweet. I mean, yeah, we've it, got the is, technology to do that now. It's yeah, it's fine. we do. Sure, we do. Sure Plus, they're going to sell a lot more doors because people are going to take them off and drop them and beat them up, and then you're going to be like, "I need a new door," right? Uh, right, right, right. So, so on that same note, you know, we're talking, you know, your number two there. I, I, I thought that, you know, rag top. You know, soft top, hard top availability, you know, all those types of options to where, you know, like you said, light bars, um, those sorts of things. Just be able to accessorize it. It would be so smart for them to do that. That's right. Flag you know, flag mask receptacle so you could put your giant American flag <laughs> down in the – yeah. No, I'm, I'm kidding on right. that one. I don't – that's one thing we don't need, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, enough of that ride down the highway. <laughs> so, uh, so, wow. Wow, uh, man. I cannot believe that we're – we're uh here we are we're, we're we're on the same page here so all right so jay's number you, one number one reason in the top five things ford needs to do with the bronco to make it great here we go yeah i think to prove to the rest of the market that you are playing hardball you need to show them coming out of the shoot that you're playing hardball and I think that height of the vehicle for water clearance and other clearances is very important. You need to make sure you come out of the chute with like a 33-inch tire, 17, 18-inch rims. Don't fool around with small tires, guys. Make it stock in the factory and then let it go from there. 
And the other piece to my number one, to play hardball and show the competition that you're serious about what this vehicle should be, is this thing ought to automatically have the air intake in a position to where you don't have to modify uh, anything yeah. for a snorkel or anything. Just slap it right on there. And and what made me think of that was you and I had a conversation about two months ago. You were shopping outside of a Costco, and there was a Toyota Tacoma that was sitting out there, yeah. and it was a it was a TRD. Yeah. What it, yeah. And it had a snorkel on it from the factory. Yep. And you, you sent me that picture, and yep. you said, these guys are serious. This yeah. is probably the only vehicle in the aftermarket or in the market that, that has this on it stock from the factory. Well, and they're going to see some more of those. I was out in front of a Toyota dealer yesterday shooting some video for our project, and right behind yeah. me, and I didn't plan it this way. They just happened to have them parked in that area where a bunch right. of those Tacomas, and right. two or three of them had snorkels on them sitting at the dealership right on the right. lot. And, right, and so for me, that... If, if I'm Ford and I'm trying to appeal to that market yeah. that that yeah. Jeep is, you've got to come out of the chute playing hardball. And because look, you don't have to put it on there if you're worried about appearances, but make it right. so that you can aftermarket, you can, hook it directly. Attack, man. Ford, make your own. Make it an accessory, but make it so that you don't have to cut a hole in the, in the quarter panel. To, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. And come right out of the chute with the large tires, man, because those are expensive tires for... You know, if you in, in order to accept that size of a tire, you got to have the right rims. So why make your consumer go make this thing do what it should be doing? You should be yeah. making it do for us what we want. So Ford, listen on that. You need those things. So that's my number one. Too. All right. So this is no surprise at this point. Um, although I would have been surprised before we started the podcast to to learn that these were going to line up like this. But all right. So here we go. So here's. Here's my number one, Keith's number one, and the five things Ford needs. All right, let me just get to it. I don't I don't need to keep. All right, here we go. <laughs> Make it for the Overland crowd, which is basically that's what ex- you just said. Okay, That's exactly what I'm talking Put about. Your, my Toyota FJ's got big, giant tires on it with 16-inch wheels. It came that way from the yep. factory. Okay? That's right. There was a 17-inch yep. option, but it still had pretty big tires on it. Um mm-hmm. Make this thing with high ground clearance. Make it made. Uh, look, this is all stuff we've talked about from from number five all the way down to number one. If you, right. uh, l- okay, hang on. I, I need to. I need to. I got. I got to talk to the camera here. Okay, Ford. Ford. Listen to me, Ford. Listen. Sounds, sounds like a little yacht rock. I need. We're gonna do this in a calm. I need your attention. Okay. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Listen to me. I'm begging you. Okay, please don't make this car for soccer moms like GM, like Chevy did with the Blazer. Please, please. Okay, we have enough of that already. There's hundreds of those cars. Make this car for the Overland crowd. Make this truck, whatever you want to call it, make it for the Overland crowd, and you'll do just fine. Okay? If this make thing... Make it for the home car. <laughs> this thing shows up, and it looks like that Blazer looks, where it's got low ground clearance, and it's aerodynamic it's your the game is over before it's even started nobody's gonna touch it nobody's gonna touch it all right so okay that that was great i i i um, oh and by the way hang on ford ford and by the way i think we've proven here at counter gurus that we have your best interest in mind Go to our website at partscounterguru.com and click on the Ask Us a Question tab, and we'll be glad to represent you for future engineering and development projects. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> all right. Awesome. Yes. That's perfect, man. Love it. Absolutely. No, we are speaking the truth. We are speaking the truth. We do not want any uh, repeat of the Chevy Blazer, well, man. Make it so you can camp in it. Make it for the Overland crowd. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. I know somebody's got data somewhere that says, look, less than you know two percent of these four wheel drives that are bought are actually used in four wheel drive. So we're just going to make it like for wintertime driving and call that a four wheel drive. No, 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 no. The Don't national do me parks like that. have. Way, the, the attendance at national parks is at an all-time high. It's never been this high. People are out camping. People are out doing outdoorsy stuff. People are trying to get off the grid. Trust me on this, Ford. Trust me on this. Trust us on this. We know what we're yes. talking about. 
If yeah. You, and, and if this thing right now, if you're about to roll this out tomorrow and it doesn't meet these criteria, you need to go back and you need to don't do it. Don't you dare do it. Go back and go back and reset. Right. <laughs> so did you hear, did you hear the other rumor that it's going to be a baby Bronco as well out there? I hope that's the one that we've we've seen. I hope yeah, that's, I do as well. Yeah. But speculation is is the ones that we've seen is actually going to be the midsize, and the other one's going to be a four door, not a not an option, just a four door. I think, and it's going to be like similar to like the the, the Land Rover like LR3 or something. Yeah, and it kind of looks like it. Yeah, see, and, Land they, Rover's got that market cornered. That's not, mm-hmm. you know, don't yeah. don't try that. I'm telling you what we we are telling you what works here. That ain't it. Yeah, Bronco too, man. Bronco yeah, that two. went that they went said, so well, right? Well, they said they they speculate that it's basically built on the um, uh, what's that little uh, what is it Edge? Yeah. Man, I tried to I tried something. to talk my mom into buying a Bronco too in like the eighties because it was like just slightly it was it was moms could drive it, but it was just four wheel drive enough to get away with it kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, come on, man. Come on. No. Right. No. Well, the one other thing I'd like to say to Ford before we get out of here. Do you here, need man. uh here, let me okay, go ahead. Yeah. Ford Way back when, on a low-speed car chase in California. Talking about OJ! Do not offer the color white as an option. No juice! No juice. <laughs> right? Amen. Yeah, yeah but I they, mean, they're, they're going to... Go you're not going to get that wish. They're going to... I I know it. White is just it's, too neutral and too many you know fleet cars and all that. Uh, it is, but... Uh, you know, I, I do think that that, that it led to some of its go, demise. Go, man. go the other direction, man. Go OJ Orange. Go full on, you know. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if I could handle that. Don't know if I could handle that, man. Orange. Ugh. I'm not a Bronco. Maybe if you make it a, a burnt orange kind of color with uh, some, you know, black bars on it or something. I don't know. <laughs> I guess if you're, I guess if you're, you're living in Colorado and you're a Denver Bronco fan, then yeah. that might oh, be appropriate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 You know, or a Tennessee Volunteer fan. Well, that's pretty bright orange, isn't it? Or or a Clemson Tiger fan. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they ought to do. They ought to offer it in collegiate colors. There you go. Let's sell a few. You know. To college kids, I think yeah. With, with, yeah. yeah, the collegiate color, like uh, you know, your college uh, on on, give it that option. You know, there's your accessorized Ford. Listen yeah. to me, pick your own color, specialize, specialize. <laughs> All right, man, <laughs> I this, love that man. It's been, uh, <laughs> I think this podcast ended up being more fun than we intended. <laughs> I love it, man. I kept I kept wanting to throw a little Barry White in there. Yeah, man. well, you can't look. I mean, research shows that if you're too aggressive when you're trying to get a point across, people don't listen. So I thought it would make sense to come across smooth, right? Boy, you know what? I wish my dad had a had have adapted into that research. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So anyway, I mean, dad, dad, you know I'm talking to you, pal. You were a little hard on me when so I was So this was this was this was uh was this this was no, Young Jay it. and his dad having a conversation. Son, come see me, please. <laughs> and that's my dad's music playing, not there mine. You. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that was my point. Um, all right, uh, are you? Will you please do the uh, honors of the uh, where to, where are we at? Where to find us? All that? where where are we at, man? <laughs> sure, I can do that. Yeah, um, you can reach us on. Uh, well, first of all, you can get to our website. It's uh, www.partscounterguru.com. Um, we are on a lot of platforms out there, people. Um, you can reach us over on Stitcher, uh, Google Podcast, uh, Google Play. Um, we're on uh, iTunes, Apple Podcast. Um, we're on Spotify. Most importantly, we are over on YouTube. And you can reach us on YouTube at uh, youtube.com. And we are the Parts Counter Guru. Or you can get to our link. Go to a podcast link tab on our website. And you can click there and get over there. And when you're there, 
what we really want, people, is your subscription um, as well as uh, uh, your thumbs up on anything that we do. And we want you to ring that bell. Um, those things are free to you, but they are priceless to us. So uh, you can also check us out over on a couple of social media platforms that we're on. Uh, we are uh, on Facebook, and that would be facebook.com uh, parts counter forward slash parts counter guru. Or if you're already on Facebook, you can tag us at parts counter gurus. Uh, over on Instagram. It is the parts counter gurus. So there you go. Did that cover it all? I get. I think you got it. Yeah, and um, feel free to donate. Yeah. Yeah. Patreon. Yeah. Yeah. Feel yeah. free to donate. Feel free to uh, give us Patreon. anything you want. Com. Oh, you're talking about uh, well, Patreon. dot com forward slash parts counter gurus. I think. Yeah, that's what we want. But yeah, you're yeah, talking about uh, if you got some uh, stuff. Uh, in the automotive industry that you would like to get the word out. Is that what you're talking about? Pretty much, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, you want us to do a uh, product review for you, man? Just uh, yeah, just just get in there and um, contact us. You can contact us, and uh, we'll be glad to uh, entertain that for you. Makes or be en- or be entertainment for you. Makes for good content. I, I like I like that, and we like it, and we like doing that kind of stuff. I just got a new uh, I just got a new pneumatic air polisher. Oh really? Yeah, and you know what, what I did? What are you gonna do with that? I'm gonna polish that? stuff, man. Well, I know that, but I mean, what 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 prompted you to buy that? I mean, what were you um, need to polish? Uh, are you sitting down? I have an RV. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah, I do. So, um, but but you a lot of these the campgrounds gosh, have uh, they don't cut their tree branches back, and the branch uh, tree, there's yeah, no, almost nothing want. worse for scratch and clear coat than tree branches. Yeah, yeah. So you got so, a buffer. Yeah, yep. I got gotcha. you. So yeah, I, get I went it. out and found. I uh, checked a bunch of reviews, mm-hmm. and some of the best buffing pads you can get yeah. by design are made by the chemical guys. Ooh, and so chemical I guys. bought this kit that comes with uh, the buffing pads and a pad cleaning agent uh, spray bottle. That's theirs. That's their product, mm-hmm. and their pads yeah. have a they have a uh, they have kind of grooves in the pads that help hold the the polishing compound. So yeah. I, don't know, I I just thought I'd try them out and see how they do. That's awesome, man. I'm, I'll be very interested in finding out how that goes out. You're gonna do a you're gonna do a uh, little video yeah, on might. that too, right? I might, you know. Yeah, you should. You know, got to show the love, man. Yeah. Give, give those guys some love, and and um, that'll help us out on our uh, on our channel too. Give us a little bit more for people to watch. We're trying to satisfy our audience as much as we can, so that'll be another uh, well, addition to that. So I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, I might. We'll see. Okay. So uh, right. you good? We good? It's been a good I'm podcast. I'm good, man. What's, yeah, it, it has. I, I've enjoyed it, man. So we're anticipating the Broncos. So maybe when we're at SEMA, we might be able to uh, fill you guys in a little bit more. So keep your keep your ears out and your eyes out for us to be at SEMA. We'll let you know when we're there. So Keep your eye on our website. Keep your eye on our Instagram account, Facebook page. Uh, definitely some new videos coming out on the YouTube side. Uh, live streaming coming uh, first week of November from the SEMA and Apex shows. Uh, I think that's it, right? 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 That's it, okay. man. Yeah, that's a busy schedule. That's a busy uh, schedule. Take us out, man. F- until next time, that is Jay over there, over there, over there, over there, over there. I'm Keith. Uh, how about this one? That's Keith. This is my this is my fa- I, this is this is one I've been telling my little league baseball team. I like it. I can't life lesson. I can't wait. Yep. If you think that you are not great, uh, I'm sorry. Ooh, I stepped on that. If you think that you are not capable of doing great things. Do little things in a great way. Ooh, I likey. Good job, man. All right, right, everybody. Thanks for watching and listening. We'll see you next time. Take care.